Welcome back, everybody. I'm so excited for Varane Gengard. And if you're excited too, uh, we got good news because again, next week, February 1st, the Varane Gengard is going to be available for everybody for $7.99 USD and on February 14th for 15K steel. So get ready for that. Uh, it's going to be awesome. And yes, we are going to normally we have like a two week period uh, of uh, before they're available for steel. But because it's our anniversary, we want to just do it a little earlier by one day. So uh, get, get ready for that. It's going to be awesome. So, uh, but for this segment too, we are going to dive into the the narrative, the, the lore, the art, all of the uh, stuff that is so important, at least definitely to me and I know to a lot of people here on the couch. So I'm very excited to hear about this. So welcome everybody. Uh, Steph, thanks for sticking around and talking more about this awesome new hero, the Varangian Guard. So thank you very much. Yeah, good. Uh, cool. And also we're joined over here on the very far couch, but uh, our Amazing game writers. Uh, we have Andre. We have Ian. It's it's close okay. to your heart. That's close. <laughs> always close to the heart. That's great. Thanks. And uh, Raf, of course, our uh, resident historian. Uh, so thank you all for joining us on the couch today. So uh, let's dive into this uh, stuff. Do you want to give a little introduction now to, for the uh, for the hero? Uh, of course, it's a. Uh... Um, my pleasure to talk here now about the Varangian Guard hero. It's our first fully armored Vikings, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, all the other Vikings just roll up and whatever they got, and this one's like, I'm actually going to prepare for battle <laughs> and try to win this thing. So, uh, super hyped to to bring this. Uh, nice. um, this uh, this hero is a uh, female body type. He has an axe in the one hand and a shield in the other. Um, and when we talk about the aspects of her play. Uh, we're going to talk about kind of two things. One is going to be the violent Viking aspect, and the second will be the loyal mercenary aspect. The violent Viking, of course, is represented through the axe, which is really going to bite into opponents, embed in them in a way that the others don't, and set her up for her, her really fun kind of cool mix-up uh, nice. that others will talk about in the next segment. We'll get to that. Uh, but yes, this is Violent Viking, and I can't wait for this mix-up. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, and then the second is a Loyal Mercenary, and that's going to be well represented through her shield, her ability to multi-block and defend herself. You're going to see that in a couple moments as well. Uh, and she's going to really help her team out with uh, her feats um, that are going to bring benefits to her, her teammates, V1, V3, uh, for survivability and, and killability, and her Tier 4, which is really going to help her move forward with the team and take back space for for their team so nice. can't wait to show that in the next seven segment with the others that's very cool well yeah thank you very much sounds really like really cool i'm very excited to see just the the next like viking and also i want to say thank you so much because now we get to round out that uh that missing space in the the roster now so my ocd is very appreciative <laughs> of that because Oh boy, it's been been four years almost since since Yorm. So, Ooh, but who's counting, eh? Uh, me, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's great. Uh, so yeah. Um, but let's let's talk a bit more about the story. Like, uh, so let's um, Andre uh, and Ian. Can you tell us a bit more about like who is this Varangian guard for us? What's the story of for honor when it comes to her? Uh, happy to get into it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the Varangian guards are mercenaries. Uh, they travel the world uh, fighting for various clients. And in their travels, uh, their identities have evolved. Uh, and in one way, you can see that in their appearance, as Stefan's mentioned, they are fully armored Vikings. You also see it in their language as well. So uh, the dialogue in game is a mix of Greek and Icelandic. So as you know, uh, all of our uh, Vikings speak Icelandic. It's Greek. That's new. And it's a little bit of a clue to where uh, the Varangian guards have been to in the world. So we're not going to mm -hmm. nail it down, but that's your clue. Uh, and so when you hear them speak in Greek, uh, this is when their more mercenary side is coming out. Uh, it represents, you know, how stoic they are. They're there to get a job done that's refined. And then when they slip into the Icelandic, uh, that's when you hear that Viking core that Stefan uh, mm -hmm. mentioned coming out. And they're more brutal, violent. Their blood is up on the battlefield. Um, but what makes the Varangian guards uh, so famous as mercenaries is their <coughs> loyalty. So they're intensely loyal to each other, uh, as you can see uh, in the feats that I've mentioned as well. Uh, but they're also loyal to their clients. So a lot of mercenaries get a bad rep for, you know, uh, uh, betraying their clients if a better offer comes along. They're really, their allegiance is really only to whoever will pay mm -hmm. them the most money. Uh, not so with the Varangian guards. If they say they're going to fight for you, they will fight for you, no matter what. Uh, so they cost a lot of money, <laughs> but what you're buying is that ironclad loyalty. So uh, that begs the question, 
how do the Varangian Guards uh, fit into the seasonal narrative? And I believe uh, Ian has some more information to share on that. I do. Uh, I do. Yes. Maybe? Right. So. Yes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I hope so because I prepared nothing. So it has to be you. I wonder um, what happens. Yes. Absolutely. Let's just wind the clock. Uh, the clock's back a little bit. In TU1, uh, we had the Highlander Maddox. Uh, he betrayed his people, his chieftain, to side with Horkos. Uh, he killed everyone who was, uh, well, not by himself, uh, he and his uh, his men killed everyone who was loyal to Chimera. Um, but there is one who escaped. Uh, if, if players paid attention to the lore orders, uh, they might have noticed that the chieftain's daughter escaped. And uh, now we can officially reveal that this chieftain's daughter, her name is Kadla, and she is our main... Varangian guard hero. Uh, Katla um, went into exile uh, when her uncle uh, took uh, unceremoniously took the throne. Uh, she roamed the uh, frozen wastelands of Alkenheim until she came across uh, the Varangian guard. And there uh, they took her in. She trained with them. She learned their ways. She learned their cultures. She became one of them. Eventually she took the pledge, became a Varangian guard herself. And now her first act is sh she's hired her own crew to go back to Heathmore to reclaim her village. So now it's Katla versus Maddox, and it's the Varangian Guard versus Horkos, and it's really, we're, we're putting an, an exclamation point here on the year of injustice because there's been so many injustices. We had a lot of, you know, Horkos has been wreaking havoc pretty much throughout all of year seven, but now finally, you know, some good guys are coming in and <laughs> trying to balance the scales a little bit. Um, yeah, what do you think about that, Andre? I'd say that's absolutely accurate. Uh, the Varangian Guards are these paragons of, of hope uh, now at the end of your injustice, like you said, it's a great way to cap it off. Uh, and as you also heard in the trailer, there's the line, um, justice is on the march. So they really Thank do you. represent, you know, a ray of light at the end of this uh, dark, dark year. And uh, I believe Maddox, he also tries to uh, do something pretty schemy in yeah, character well, I mean, for him, right? Yeah, well, I mean, he's a sleazy guy, you know, yeah. and uh, even he himself, you know, he when he sees the Varangian, the Varangian guard coming, he realizes the threat they represent, and he's like, oh, wait, maybe I can try and, you know, uh, wrestle something out of it. So he tries to hire them from underneath, you know, Cadla. He, he offers them more money, but as Andre said, you know, they have their morals, they have, they have their code, uh, they refuse. They're here. They're here to fight for Cadla. They're here for, for him. So it's very ironic too, considering that the Varangian guards have no blood relation whatsoever to Cadla. Mm -hmm. They're mercenaries. They're, fa you know, mercenaries in general are, are famous for being just greedy, and yet they show more loyalty to her than her own blood. So just goes to show the level of uh, his treachery. Exactly. Right? I mean, it's treason, right? This season is treason, and now <laughs> we're treason, right to find yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, surprising because at some point I thought that the message was, "Hey, Maddox was right," <laughs> and now no, I learned I, that he's I wrong. Was, I mean, that, that's a debate. You, you can know? argue it. But Maddox did nothing wrong. Is that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, I thought this was a plan. <laughs> oh, I guess <laughs> I guess not. I guess not. We got to keep reading those lore orders, though. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, it sounds great. I'm excited to, you know, really cap off that the conflict between these two, the oath breaker and this oath keeper. So that's that's a really cool, uh, really cool way to like again cap off the year, like you said. Uh, so that's you know the the Varangian guard in the lore for honor. Uh, but obviously, this was like a real world kind of group uh, of of you know uh, people. Uh, so from a historical angle, Raf, can you share you know what were the inspirations for this? Like, how far down does this rabbit hole go? Yeah, of course. Uh, we took inspiration for from history for that. Uh, the Varangian Guard is probably the most famous uh, military unit of the Middle Ages. Um, they were so the members of the guard uh, were Norse people uh, from mostly from Scandinavia, um, fighting across Europe and the Middle East and selling their services as mercenary. And they're mostly associated with the Byzantine Empire, which was, it's a successor uh, of the Roman Empire in the Middle Ages. And it was at the time the wealthiest and most sophisticated uh, uh, state uh, pretty much in Europe and the Middle East. So it was a, a right place to go if you wanted to fight for money. <laughs> There, uh, in the capital of the empire, Constantinople, uh, the Varangian guard served as the personal guard of the emperor, but also as shock troops that were really renowned for their uh, fearlessness, their violence, as Stefan said, and their loyalty. We have one example in more than 200 years of history of their existence, of them um, revolting against their employer. Uh, so, so yeah, this is really special. And this loyalty, we were drawn to it when we started thinking about the hero. This was something that we really wanted to represent. 
but it's not the only aspect that we wanted to represent. We used also the fact that the Varangian Guard, uh, so they were coming from other places and traveling. Uh, some would go, get paid, and come back. Uh, in Norway, for instance, there is a famous story about a king of Norway ca called Harald Ardrada. Uh, we took inspiration from history to, to get uh, the story of Katla, her coming back, being exiled and coming back. Um, but also, uh, the, when, they, when they go somewhere, they are Vikings. Yes, Vikings in their core. But they become Vikings with a twist because they live embedded and surrounded by another culture, this Byzantine culture. And we wanted to reflect this uh, multiculturalism or biculturalism. Uh, so we have a, vi a Viking with a twist, a Viking who has a few Greek words, a Viking who fights in a, a bit more of a structured way than uh, the other Vikings, a Viking who has, of course, a lot of armor, a Viking who is... Uh, so it's reflected also in executions, mood effects, the music. Uh, there are some Armenian and Byzantine influences there. And, nice. of course, also in weapons, uh, uh, armor sets, art in general. Great. Uh, well, I mean, speaking of art too, do you know, uh, we have some concept art too that we can kind of show. You can kind of walk us through a bit of, of you know, that that process. Absolutely. This is something uh, I like so much. Uh, so we started uh, from history, so from manuscripts, from text descriptions, from uh, archaeological diggings, from drawings from the time, all kind of sources. But from history, we build our fantasy. And the fantasy we wanted to build was an armored Viking, as Stefan mentioned. Uh, what does it mean, an armored Viking? Well, you've seen it. You see it on the uh, key art that we have here and on the concept art on the screen. Um, so the an armored Viking has a uh, helmet, of course, and you have multiple uh, kind of helmets that we uh, used, uh, greaves, um, Shin pads, multiple layers of armor. So, of course, you would have some uh, gambaison, which is uh, pretty much a clothed pad, uh, yeah, clothed, padded cloth armor. Uh, you have chain mail, you have scale mail, uh, you will have some uh, multi layers uh, of leather, uh, and you have something I personally really love, which is um, it's called Varangian bra uh, <laughs> in sources. So it's uh, like um, uh, leather straps that uh, uh, link the uh, or hold the, uh, the, the chain mail and holds um, a centerpiece, uh, a cardiophylax. It's a protection for the heart, uh, and this is really iconic. and we wanted to include it, and well, we did. <laughs> so we did, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, so pretty armored uh, uh, Viking. Uh, we also added some other elements just to give uh, some personality to the hero, mm -hmm. a pouch, because, uh, well, it's a mercenary, so uh, she is getting money uh, in her pouch. And she has a tunic, a decorated tunic, because she's a palace guard, and she needs to go to court and to appear in court, in court events. So, yeah, uh, multiple layers of explanation and multiple layers of armor. Uh, that's nice. the important point. And and I think like speaking of armor uh, as well, like right there was like, a lot of work that went into you know some customization for the armor. Right? Absolutely, so. uh, I mentioned that uh, we had that fantasy of an armored Viking, but mm -hmm. another aspect that we really wanted to nailed was uh, the uh, the customization aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to give so the Varangian Guard. It's a it's a unit. You are issued with standard equipment. Um, but you also uh, you want to bring in some element of individuality into the guard, or coming from different places. And we wanted the player to be able to have this choice, to be able to go with the cape, without cape, different types of helmets. Uh, you will see that there is a set that has a face reveal. There are other sets that have so uh, a, con a conic uh, head, a uh, conic helmet with an aventail, which is a way to protect your uh, your face. Uh, some others have complete face masks. Uh, you can see it here. It's inspired from uh, neighboring culture, the uh, uh, Sicilian uh, Norman from Italy that the Varangian Guard would have fought. Um, so yeah, you have multiple options. Uh, in the armor, you also have different types of chain mails. You have different types of scale mails. Uh, you can go with other types of armor too. Uh, you can see the, the, the many, many types of uh, customization that are available and that we wanted to offer as an option. 
but they also seem to really like the pointy helmets. <laughs> you know, is there is there, a, is there a historical reason for the for the yeah, pointy yeah. helmets? Uh, I, I, you want me to say that they stabbed their opponents? A little with bit, their head. yeah. Uh, I kind of want to know where's no. the history for that. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. that's not the case. Oh, darn, well, darn. maybe they did, but that's not <laughs> uh, what my sources tell me. Uh, basically, when well, you know, the helmet it's to protect your skull. Uh, everyone's and as is tradition. That. I'm aware. <laughs> so basically, if it is like that, it deflects. Uh, uh, blows much better than if it was um, a really uh, queer kind of, uh, of helmet. There are other types of helmets, but in their case, we went with this one. We also have a helmet like this one, which is a late, ridge ro a late Roman ridge helmet, I mean, jewels. This is us uh, taking the liberty of going up and down the thousand of years of uh, Roman and Byzantine history that preceded the uh, Varangian Guard. Wow. Uh, we mentioned customization. I did. Yeah. Uh, there are uh, also options that we have with uh, uh, material, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, color sets. Um, as you can see, the the, the 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 entire armor will change. You can apply the uh, uh, the material changes to it, uh, and we try to maximize it so that you, well, you can do as much as you can and change and express yourself as much as you ca as you want uh, with the material, but also with the uh, color sets uh, and you can go with uh, well as many colors as we have and as many colors as you want nice uh yes. is there a particular color you think you'll be playing with? i mean they got a purple ponytail right now so i think <laughs> i might just go with uh, that, the so. dark purple is uh, really historical yeah. too yeah. uh i would go with this one but pink is also something what? i like but not historical but really <laughs> i like it so hey it's expression though that. so yes. yeah yeah that's awesome. Uh, well, I, yeah. I, I have a history question. Oh yeah, uh, oh, for gosh. the professor. Um, well, for him. Could, yeah. or it's, maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's for the people at home. But could you explain uh, maybe uh, why we pronounce it Varangian and ah. not Varangian? Yes, you're right. Um, so basically, uh, the, the 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 loyalty was really really important for. Uh, the, 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 so it's something that's so important that it's actually embedded into their name. Um, the, the name Varangian in English, it comes from Old Norse Veringyar, uh, which means sworn companion or um, uh, oath taker. And so, yeah, this was something that they would do. They would take an oath to their lord. It could be in Scandinavia or in our case, mostly to the Byzantine emperor. And this oath was their bond. They lived by it. They uh, often died by it, too. Um, but uh, yeah, it was so important that uh, it was their name. And this is why we've been uh, pronouncing it uh, in this Old Norse fashion with the RG. That's that's exactly. good. I, mean, I know cool. during the development, I had to remember it because I was sort of like a karate gi, you know, and I don't know why. <laughs> that's just how I could remember like the, the hard G there. But it's good to know there's actual, again, like history behind it, which is always awesome. Well, it's a <laughs> basis. We, we go into fantasy. Uh, from there, we go into fantasy, right. but there is a basis. Now, speaking of, uh, of the historical elements, we talked a lot about the yeah. armor, but I think you have something hiding behind the couch over there we can show off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was really, really well hidden. I'm sure <laughs> no one saw it. Nobody saw it. Yeah, no. I've been uh, uh, dying to do this since yeah. the trailer. You there know? you go. Uh, so, yeah, I will let uh, uh, a wonderful Alex, JC, and Vanessa talk about why we chose the uh, long axe and uh, the kite shield for this hero, mm -hmm. the, the gameplay reasons, the animation reasons, but from an art and history point of view, well, the Varangian guards, uh, they were called in sources Aspidi Foroi, uh, so uh, shield bear bearer, and uh, Peleki Foroi, so uh, axe bearer. And so we wanted to go with that. Um, but when we, we design weapons, we go like on a scale from realistic to mythological. Um, we start with weapons who are more, uh, you know, what they, they are used, they, exactly what they're used to be. Uh, so you have some metal, but not too much. Uh, then we clean it up. Uh, we add some metal, some ornaments, some different ways to express yourself. Um, the, the, the weapons for a mercenary, they are the tools of the work. Uh, so I could believe that as a mercenary, you would want to show off, uh, to try to show that you've survived, uh, to uh, use your weapons as a memento for fallen uh, companions or brothers or whoever. And so more and more you can add elements. You can add some more weapon, uh, some more metal, uh, some more precious metal. 
uh, you can go into a more fantastical way too uh, and use different things that are inspired both so the double nature comes back here too uh, so both from the, uh, the, the, the Viking mythology and from the Roman and Byzantine history also mythology or symbols uh, and more and more when you go into uh, the you go up the scale uh, uh, into the mythological you would have more gold you would have more tessellated glass which is something really really important uh, in uh, Byzantine art uh, you would have a lot of symbols but yeah as that's, you can see that's multiple awesome. uh, animals yeah, and I think there was like one animal in particular you were really excited about to, yes, to express it's, on the uh, weapons. It's the last one, uh, the dragon. Yes. So of course, dragons—they're staple of uh, uh, Viking mythology, but uh, they were really, really important in the Roman and then Byzantine armies, and so Varangian Guard too. Uh, the, 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 they had a, um, a sigil that was called a, a draco. Uh, and it was pretty much like a, a dragon-shaped uh, sigil that you would go into battle with. Uh, for a thousand years, the Romans and the Byzantines used that. And we know uh, that the Varangian guards were the last to do it in history. Ah. So this is the shield and the axe I was talking about. So if whether you want to be more realistic or you want to be more mythological, we have you covered. <laughs> and you want to feel like a thousand-year-old Roman fighting as a Viking, uh, Varangian guard, well, we have you covered too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we offer all sorts, so that's amazing. <laughs> we try. We try. Uh, uh, really, I want to uh, 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 give a big, big shout out uh, to the the art team uh, because mm -hmm. they worked so hard on this, and it's a, a team effort. There are multiple people uh, who do that, uh, including the Chengdu team uh, that we uh, love very, very much, <laughs> and we thank very, very much too. So yeah, yeah uh, it's the result of the work of uh, these many people. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and again, looks absolutely incredible. And and you know, honestly, big shout out to to you three as well for crafting all this amazing like lore. Going back into the history, I, I love me some lore. It's like uh, it's just one of my things. But no, so yeah, thank you three as well for yeah, again just making this amazing uh, story to help us bring this new hero to life. So that's awesome.